Another video I wanted to turn was the uh, apple and fruit uh, tree blossoms and, and sort of talk about what uh, what I see. Now um, I'm in northern France here and, and last year we had a, a massive uh, apple crop. Um, I think everybody had a lot of apples because of a lot of pollinators. It was very warm weather all the time and we had no late frosts. Um, this year I think it's different. I can't quite compare this year to last year in the sense of um, well, you know, the temperatures have just been up and down, and uh, so anyway, this is what, what I've got right now is apple blossom coming through, but I don't have as much blossom as I had last year, so it seems like there are less flowers on the tree. Um, it doesn't seem like they've been frost damaged, it's not like I've got lots of dead, dead buds, but um, anyway, the apple blossoms seem to be coming out later than they did last year, because they seem to have... Uh, you know, I can't see any more plum blossoms, I'll show you in a second. Um, well, these are okay. I'm pretty sure they'll be well pollinated, but um, we've had hailstones, we've had uh, all sorts of uh, bad weather, which is very different to last year. And I guess the mason bee population that I have, there you go, is that, is that a broken branch because of, well, I don't know what that, why that's broken. Maybe just uh, too much, too many apples. Um, well, we've got a thousand apples off this tree. Uh, quite large apples, which I've still got probably about 300 apples uh, in good condition that I've, I put them, put them into uh, storage on shelves last year, on wood, wooden shelves. So, so yes, I don't know what's happening. Um, and this is a big pear tree, which well, we missed a little pear tree. Back up a little bit, this is our new pear tree. This is a converse pear we planted uh, two years ago. Um, and um, you know, they, this is a thing I think is true when, um, after the blossom has gone, if the, the blossom stems do not go, it's because they're, I believe they've been uh, properly fertilised and they stay, but if, they, if they've not been pollinated and fertilised, uh, then they, they just drop. So we're going to have a look at the pear tree. This is a very old pear tree, which it always gives. Again, she's had her See, all these have, are not dropping, they're, they're pretty much staying. There's one that does drop. So what we seem to have is, uh, again, very good pollination. So what, what the sequence is uh, here is, is uh, plum, then cherry, and pear, and then uh, apple. So here we go, this is a plum tree, this is a, what we call a Ren Claude. A very sugary variety, and again, there is nothing dropping off here. I mean, we've had wind to knock off a lot of the blossoms, so there's a few going, but the pollination is pretty, pretty good. Um, again, this is going to be another. Yes, yeah, well, it seems to be maybe, maybe. Uh, well, I'm seeing not more than half of these um, former blossoms uh, fall, so. Yeah, the pollination seems pretty more than fifty percent. It may be, yeah, maybe more. But we'll see. Last year was a bumper year, so we'll, you know it's going to be strange. This is a um, uh, Mirabelle. It's like a, it's like a very small plum. Oh yeah, plum. I suppose an apricot, a mix between the two. And this is we were given a tree uh, about four years ago, which we replanted here. It needs proper pruning, but. Um, while it was just getting established, um, we're going easy on it. Uh, you can see it's lilac time. Now this is a strange one. This tree, I wonder it's not died this year. Um, it had an absolutely magnificent crop. Oh no, it's still alive. It had an absolutely magnificent crop of apples. I mean, uh, we've never seen that many in it, and I'm pretty sure most of it down to the uh, mason bees and the other pollinators, but it just absolutely gave more apples than I've ever seen in the seasons all together before, so so I don't know what she's uh, what the apple tree's up to. I think um, I don't think I'm going to get a bigger crop this as big a crop this year. That it's just taking its time. It's a very strange apple tree. This one. It's not. Um, I think it's more of a. Uh, it's, it's towards a sort of cooking apple type tree. Whereas the original apple tree that at the start of the video was um, is uh, what they call a, a cutting apple. The French talk about uh, a cutting apple or a cooking apple. 
So these are mm, the old pear trees that are going. They've been going for a while and lots of creatures uh, scratching around in there and um, yeah, so we leave that here. But <laughs> she's the the pear tree still keeps going. I mean we get lot the, the actual quality of the pears are not that great, they're covered in spots, but you can see again, you know, there's virtually little that's coming off. So that's that. This is a plum tree we planted about uh, 10 years ago. Uh, another sort of red, another, no, this is another red plum. Uh, now, okay, so there's a lot of blossoms coming off here. But still, you know, this one, uh, only two, so two years ago we had 20 kilos, three years ago we had uh, 20 plums, and last year we had, uh, we had too many plums, I don't, I don't know what we had, uh, maybe 50 kilos of plums. Um, and, you know, tend to be uh, sort of parallel to my mason bee population expanding from, from 100 uh, three years ago to 400 to six, 600 and, and more. So, you know, I don't know. Um, I know having local bees is, is, um, is having an impact. Uh, we have more fruit than everybody else around and uh, it's just that, you know, there, there are other factors, as I put in one of my blog posts, there are other factors of of, uh, of winter, of changing temperatures, the, there's a whole lot of things going on, but um, you know, what I know is that I, having bees uh, makes a big difference to the quantity of fruit I have. I don't have fruit trees without fruit, you know, old ones and uh, young ones. And here we go, this is, um, this is our early, normally this is our earliest cherry tree. Smaller cherries, um, the leaf cover is not so good, the birds get them. Um, but somehow this one's flowering late. I don't know why. Again, it's all this weird weather we're having. Uh, she flowers late. Um, but, you know, look at this. There's not a lot coming off there. I'm not sure there's a lot of um, fallen flowers either. So the pollination I'm getting on this is... Okay, some are still in flower. But normally when the petals have fallen, I expect the... I expect the stems that have not been pollinated to fall, so what I'm guessing here, um, well maybe it's a bit later, but what I'm guessing here is that uh, pollination on these, these cherry trees is uh, is pretty much uh, total with, with my mason bees. Okay, and there's another end claude we planted that one ten years ago with the, with the new apple tree and the, uh, the red plum we just looked at. Oh, we've also there, I don't know if you see it, we've got a walnut tree. So, again, this one, you know, we had virtually nothing, and now look at this, we've got um, pretty solidly pollinated. You know, oh, this one comes off. I just think that we're just getting so much more uh, of a harvest with having mason bees. So, there you go, that's that, and there's the last cherry tree, the big one, so the... Uh, and this is called the Bigaro cherry. And uh, strangely enough, it didn't seem to show many blossoms, but uh, but it's happening. Yes, there's, there's a lot of seems to be a lot of blossoms. Uh, I didn't think there were. Well, they they open gradually uh, rather than one big show. So these again, you know, we're going to get lots of cherries. We had. Uh, you know, I was looking at something like one year, three years ago, I think I had 30 kilos. Um, two years ago, yeah, three years ago, about uh, 20, 30 kilos. Two years ago, we had something like 80 to 90 kilos. It was absolutely chock-a-block with, with, um, with uh, cherries. And, and that was when I had about 400 mason bees. And then last year, um, we had this beautiful glorious weather and we had lots and lots of cherries, well, lots and lots of pollination and then of course we had the stress of all the water, uh, the, the fact that it was a, a, a drought for th three months almost, or a period of no rain for three, three months and then it lost a lot but all the cherries were enormous so here you go. And the other thing I have to say here, it's, I've got a lot of mason bees, they say about uh, two nesting females per tree and you can see I've only got what, uh, ten trees here. Um, that's if, if we just sort of needed minimal pollination. Well, in fact, what I've also got is I've got a neighbour's garden. Gee, doesn't mind. These are all plum trees. 
So there's about uh, 20 trees there. And at the other side of the the, uh, the other neighbours, a retired um, was a retired shepherd. We've got a number of you probably see in the distance down those pine trees. I've got a uh, more apple trees. There you go. see my uh, mason bees aren't short of nectar um, so that's why I managed to keep a, a population well last year produced a population of about uh, 1500 to 1600 uh, bees we'll see this year I don't not sure I'll have as many and you see that you go I'll show you what's going on in, in the stuff that I've got at the very back of the house I have um, here these are very tiny bees I have two two um, sealed, which is, I don't, I'm not sure what they are. And this is a resin bee there. Now I'll put this out rather late so there's nothing uh, nothing to be said about what's happening with these straws. Um, and they're a bit exposed, but so I, I'm not worried about that too much. You see I've got the old brick barn to do, so i better start uh, making some money. And you see this one here, back this one is we've got three blocked uh, and the plugs falling out that's interesting the plug is falling out that may be down to the, the hail and stuff and we'll come full circle that's now uh, tulip time back to the apple tree and then there you go perfect as if by magic we have a mason bee working there. Oh, huh. there she is. She's having a fight with another bee in there. So there's obviously a bit of competition. We have another two blocked here. I've been trying, if you look here, I've been trying to put holes in different places on the reeds. See if they uh, they go for that. I've, I've had one of them uh, with activity. So. That's the update. This one I put out late. Uh, nothing on that, I don't think. Although one bee was interested. So, that's the. Uh, that's what's going on in the garden.